During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about spray adjuvants. Basically, what these products are is they're thrown in along with other things, like herbicides, for example, to make them work better. And right away, your question is probably, well, if you need to throw something in, why don't they just include it right with the herbicide? Well, I hear that, and I also hear, well, man, aren't those herbicides very good? Why do they have to have something else in there? And, you know, when we think about the herbicides that we're using to control weeds on the farm, and we'll talk about a number of them throughout the show today, especially during the weed of the week time. Well, a lot of times this herbicide controls one weed, but you got like 10 different weeds in your field, so you have to mix it with another herbicide. And all of a sudden, okay, well, this one needs this surfactant to work great, or this one needs this thing uh, mixed with it to work great. And, and you just never know where that herbicide is going to go. So for the manufacturers of these herbicides, there's a few reasons that they don't put surfactants right in. When you think about the tank mixing deal, that is a big consideration of, oh, what if they mix it with something hot? Well, then I don't want to have a real strong surfactant. I got to have something a little different. Or what if I mix it with this, this, and this? I want to have flexibility for my product. So leaving the surfactant out, letting the farmer add that is a good option. The other thing is just think about the trucking. Let's say that you make a herbicide or an insecticide or a fungicide, and you make it in one big factory in the United States, but you have to ship it all over the country. Wow, you don't want to have to ship any more product than you absolutely have to. And if a herbicide is worth $50, $100, $200 a gallon, who knows what it is, and a surfactant or an additive is worth $10 a gallon or $20 a gallon, well, I don't want to add this $20 product to my $200 product and then have to pay the same shipping on that. I want to just ship the expensive stuff around and then maybe they can source the other stuff locally so we don't have all that shipping on a cheap product. Another reason why these things are not included is just mixability. So maybe if they put the adjuvant that they need together with the product, it isn't going to store very well. It's going to separate. Or maybe it even renders that herbicide less effective if those two things are sitting together for three months or six months in a jug. There are a lot of reasons why they have to be separate. So let's talk about, okay, the spray adjuvant, what really does it do? Well, there are about three things that we're kind of looking for. One is a surfactant. And what that means is basically a surface active agent. We're trying to spread and stick the product product onto the leaf. So with a water droplet landing on a leaf, we don't want just a ball of water or a ball of spray sitting there. We want it to right away spread out and then stick onto the leaf. So that's important. Another thing we're looking for, if we want to step it up from the surfactant, we go to something like a crop oil or a methylated seed oil if we want better penetration into the leaf. So it's nice to get the product to spread and stick, but now let's say we want to take that down into the leaf. You can do that better with crop oil or methylated seed oil because they will bust through the waxy leaf cuticle and help bring that product in. Well, you think about the different products that farmers are going to use, and you're looking at some that are water-based, some that are oil-based, and I mean, completely different, right? You don't mix water and oil very well. And so using some kind of surfactant, some kind of product that you're gonna mix in to help it stick on the leaf and move down through that leaf, it just makes a lot of common sense why you would need those things to get the job done. Another thing that we commonly put into products is something to sequester the hard water ions. So for example, in water, there's things like calcium and magnesium and iron that in effect could neutralize the herbicide. Roundup is a good example. That's the reason why we throw ammonium sulfate together with Roundup, it's to tie up those hard water ions so there aren't as many that can hurt the performance of the Roundup. In addition to that, it's kind of nice to have a nitrogen source. What they found is a little bit of nitrogen, like you'll find in ammonium sulfate, is good for helping bring Roundup into weeds like water hemp or Palmer pigweed, for example. And when there's a little bit of nitrogen in there, for whatever reason, it helps to absolutely give you better performance. When I say for whatever reason, most likely the reasons are that plant speeds up its growth a little bit, it helps move it to the growing point, move the herbicide to the growing point quicker, and that means a better kill. Well, when you think about a spray adjuvant, we're talking about a product that a farmer may mix with a crop protection product to help either stick the product on the leaf or to help it get into the plant faster or just do a better job at what it's trying to do. And the manufacturers of chemicals don't generally put a lot of these in the jug because they're trying to minimize shipping. They're also trying to be more compatible with lots of different mixes that a farmer may need to get the job done on his farm. Well, that job may be weed control. Can you identify this week's Weed of the Week? 